Globetrotting DeWitt Jones has spent 20 years as a freelance photographer for National Geographic. When he wasn't shooting photos for the prestigious magazine, DeWitt was making Academy Award nominated films. An accomplished studio photographer, as well as a top photojournalist, DeWitt has created award-winning ad campaigns for many of America's leading brands. As a writer, he's published nine books covering topics from nature to leadership. With a lifetime of experience in the arts, DeWitt Jones understands the power of creativity and how to inspire others to tap this valuable resource and enrich their lives. There's more than one right answer. God, it seems so simple, but it is the key to creativity. There are a thousand ways to come at any challenge to find that extraordinary view. And I know it's so easily from my photography, but sometimes it's just so hard to bring over into the rest of my life. They sent me one time to the little town called Smith River. They raise about 80% of the Easter lilies in the country around that village, and that's the story I have to tell. And I've got a perspective where I got picked lilies and unpicked lilies and the boy picking them and good body language as he puts them in the box and a little bit of the region's architecture and the weather. One right answer. Pretty good one. But boy, as a photographer, I'd never think of stopping there. I took that photograph, immediately I grabbed another lens, walked over a couple rows, knelt down and found another right answer. Same parameters of the problem, now seen from a totally different point of view. And my favorite right answer that day was this one. This is an advanced levitation technique that I'll be teaching just after the break. <laughs> Somebody had a chopper in the fields, I get a ride, get up a couple hundred feet, look down, see the extraordinary and the ordinary. Three right answers. So many things begin to change when you really come at the world from that perspective of more than one right answer. I said I'd share with you some of the techniques I use to do that and I want to show you some of my images but I'm not here to teach you photography. It's simply that the principles that I use in coming up with an extraordinary vision are the same principles that I use in running a company or dealing with a client. First decision I have to make as a photographer is what lens do I have on the camera? What lens do I have on the camera? In other words, what perspective am I going to view that challenge from to find an extraordinary view? And I know that if I don't have the right perspective, I don't have a chance. This is a shot I took of Yosemite Falls. Not a bad image. I've already gotten rid of a lot of things that might distract you from looking at the falls, like the parking lot I'm standing in or the visitor center. You know, but as I stood in front of the falls that day, I thought, is this the essence to it? Is this what got you so excited that you ran all the way across the field, the meadow, to get in that stage? yet in that position and I realized it wasn't that what had drawn my eye up there that day was just this area way down here right down at the bottom just that tree just that tree in the falls behind it I had the wrong perspective the wrong angle of view and when I changed that perspective then I really found a photograph now I use that metaphor all the time in my life I'm always saying do it do you got the right lens on your camera Sometimes we need our telephoto eyes on, you know, just to go into the, the chaos of a, of a given day or a given client's problems to find those elements that we can bring together to make it all make sense. And now before I wrap this up, let me show you one last example of how all these techniques go together. And this not an assignment for the geographic, but a big advertising campaign I did for Dewar Scotch. And they sent me over to Scotland with an obscene budget and a crew of nine and three clients to watch over me, you know, no pressure. <laughs> and one of the things they asked me to do was photograph salmon fishing on Scotland's River Tweed. And man, again, I'd done my homework. I knew what I wanted. I came down that windy road to the River Tweed. I had images in my head of backlit salmon and silver cataracts and leaping fish. And the windy road delivered us and there it was looked like the East Sandusky River, you know? the river without drama. <laughs> I turned to my art director, I said, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know, I'm carsick, I, I go back to the room. <laughs> so it was up to me. You know, how many times every week is it up to you? 
I got talking to one of the guides, the gillies, the gentleman there in the foreground. Each beat of the river, each stretch has a different guide, a different ghillie, and they know every rock and every shoal and every riffle. And he told me that salmon fishing in Scotland's a very formal affair. You wear a coat and a tie and a hat and chest waders. Now I'm getting intrigued. And then he told me that when you, when you catch a salmon, you bring it up to the fish hut, and in that hut is a leather book, and in that book is listed every salmon that's been caught on that beat in the last hundred years. Now I'm getting intrigued. Now I'm seeing this great formal dance that these guys are doing, this salmon gavotte on the river, you know. And then he said, you know, laddie, there was mist on the water this morning. That's unusual for this time of year. And my intellect climbed all over it and it said, I want to be in the place of most potential. So I'm out there two hours before dawn, and when the sun starts coming up, I got the boat, I got the ghillie, I got the fisherman, I got the right lens, I got the right focus, I got my first right answer. I got room up there for tight and a little bottle of scotch. I know what I'm doing, right? And then my intuition starts screaming at me. It says, turn around, do it. You're shooting the wrong way. Yes, sir, I listened to it. I turned around, man, that was really getting nice. I'm trying to pay attention to realize that this photograph is made by body language, not by facial expression. Get that right on the two guys. And at the same time, my, my intellect realizes the sun's going to come up behind those trees, so I yelled at the guys to get in the boat and row down there because I want to be in the place of most potential. And man, now it's really getting nice. And talk about having my technique down. I've got a walkie-talkie in that boat. Yes. <laughs> I'm not worried about making mistakes, I'm just looking for the next right answer. And they just kept coming. And this was the final ad. Why would a man rise before dawn to fish for salmon on Scotland's River Tweed? Why indeed? The good things in life stay that way. Thank you very much.